Don't go away. You won't want to miss this episode of Doggy Dilemmas. Revisiting with Benny, the seven pound Yorkie Terror. Denise Mazzola is a certified professional dog trainer with over 20 years experience training dogs and people. If you've got a doggy dilemma, Denise can help. Welcome to another episode of Doggy Dilemmas. I'm Denise Mazzola. This is Benny. He's our little seven pound Yorkie Terrier that's been staying with me for a few weeks now. His primary issue has been pretty ferocious resource guarding. Take a look at this clip to remind all of us on the severity of the situation. Would you mind moving her so the oil guy can get his truck back? Hey! 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 Knock it off! Stop it! Stop it! See? Stop. So you can see the issues that Benny has are very serious. He's a pretty ferocious resource guarder. It's a little on the humorous side because he's seven pounds. If we were looking at a Rottweiler, a German Shepherd, even a Lab, it would be a very different situation and we probably wouldn't be laughing so much about it. But Benny has got some issues. He's been working really hard and he's made a lot of improvements. So what we're gonna do today is show you where he's at in his training with me because where he's at with me is different than where he will be with others. And we're also gonna show you how to generalize the behavior. And what that means is Benny knows with, he knows the game with me. And when I drop things now, I rarely get him to actually guard the object. He's very much into the game and he wants the big payoff, which for him has been ham, turkey, roast beef, anything that, anything that he seems to like. Hang on. So where's that little piece? There you go. So then we're going to introduce you to a couple of other people that are going to be here to help and show you the next steps for getting him to play the game with them. And the ultimate goal is when he goes back to Heather and Clive in Brooklyn next week, he'll play the game with anybody that comes. The technique we're using is called classical conditioning. It was discovered by the scientist named Pavlov. I believe he actually won a Nobel Prize for it. And it's about changing the animal's association to the situation. And, and at the beginning, hi baby, at the beginning, his association was one of pretty serious aggression. And now his is, oh, I don't want the object. I want what you have because it's better. It's a bigger payoff. So let's get started. I'll review a little bit and show you where we're at with, with Mr. Benny. So last time we were together, I was, had started by moving my foot and giving him a treat. And as you can see today, it's not a big issue for him whatsoever. So it was just as basic as that. Then it was a series of moving my foot in different places around him. And each time I did this during training, I gave him a treat. So now um, Benny's pretty much at the point where I can push him away with my foot. And he's playing the game for the treats. Did he find it? There it is. Oh, you missed it. It's right here. Good boy. And I'm using little pieces of ham and turkey. And of course, it's a, it's a setup situation. He's warmed up. He knows that there's a, there's a game. Then I added, oh, no, 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 stay back, stay back. Because that's generally people are going to say something when they're pushing him away. So not only did Benny resource guard things that were on the floor, but if you just moved your foot towards him, he'd go after your foot. And if you came down with your hand towards him like you were going to move him away, he, went to, he would go after your hand. So I've also done that where I'll move him back and I'll give him a treat. Okay, then once I got him so that he was um, playing the game and looking excitedly to me for the treats for the foot and the hand motion, then I started to drop things that I knew he probably wouldn't grab or hopefully be interested in, such as my wooden spoon. And then he gets a big payoff for that. And a big payoff for a little seven pound dog is just a couple pieces of ham. Good boy. So, as, and now that he knows we're playing the game today, 
he's probably not going to pick up anything. So then I would stand at the counter, say, oh dear, I dropped the scissors, he doesn't care, and I give him treats. And I'm purposely dropping things that I am pretty sure he will not resource guard. Now one of his hot objects was a pencil or a pen. So we'll start with a pen. We'll get a few little pieces. I don't have to keep. All right. So again, we drop it. <gasps> Good boy. And we give him a couple pieces of ham. And oh no, 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 no. I'll move towards them and I'll give them a couple pieces of ham. It's important to replicate whatever you think the owners are going to be doing, or if you're doing this yourself, whatever it is you do when something drops. And part of it is changing our behavior. It doesn't really upset me if he picks up something. Good boy! And he gets a couple pieces of ham. So let's make sure he finds, there's one more. It's right here, there. Good boy. So, now one of his hot objects is a pencil. And so, again, I'm just gonna turn sideways, drop the pencil. I'm gonna wait and see if he does anything in terms of wanting to go towards it. He looks at it, good boy. And he gets a couple pieces of ham. And as I come down, oh, he's found the last one. Good boy. And as I reach for the pencil, he's gonna get another piece. As I reach for the pencil, good boy, he's going to get another piece. Okay, so the really hot thing that he likes to run away and guard is paper. And I've not used tissues yet. As you saw in that clip, tissues are pretty hot for him. So we're going to start with plain paper towel. Hopefully there's nothing on it. I've just crumpled it up for him. Good boy. I can come in and take it. Good boy. I'm still going to pay him. I'll give it back. Good boy. And he doesn't particularly care. So it looks kind of like a non like a non issue at this point. Again, this is how he is with me and we need to generalize that. So I'm going to up the ante today and I'm going to drop a piece of paper towel that I've actually wiped my fry pan with, so it has some grease smell to it, and we'll see what he does. Get my ham ready. <laughs> Good boy. So again, he's, he's what we call warmed up. He understands there's a game happening. Good boy. And this isn't a real life situation. This is replicating a real life situation, but it's not a real life situation. And clearly the, the treats and the rewards are much higher value for him. Good boy. Okay, so we're gonna go back to the beginning. We're going to bring in somebody else and start the generalization process with a brand new person that um, has maybe had one pairing with Benny. So that means um, Amy's done one session of moving her foot in front of him and giving him treats. So let's have Amy come on over. Are you unmuted? I believe so. <laughs> All right. So um, what we're doing, what I want you to do is what I started doing way back at the very beginning. And you're not going to move your foot towards him initially. <clears throat> Just move it in front of him, hold it there, and then give him a treat. Okay. And make sure that the foot happens, pause, and then the treats happen. Okay. Okay. And if yep. we misjudge and he goes after your foot, you're still going to give him the treat and we'll correct it for the next time. Okay. okay. So if he goes after my foot, still treat him. Yes. Okay. Make sure I understand. Okay. Good. Good boy. Yes. Good. Good boy. Yes. Good boy. So a lot of times what we're looking for is what we call a it could be a yippee response, you know, yay, something good is happening. Good. Good boy. And his response is that he keeps his eyes good on you boy. and his ears are up. What I've found with Benny that when he starts to think about guarding something, he puts his ears back. Good. Good boy. Yes. Good. Now let's move it a little bit closer to his chest. 
Yes, very good. Good boy. Good boy. Good, Good very boy. nice. So she's actually able to move them. Very Good nice. Good boy. Good. Good boy. Yes. So let's have you sort of face the counter and then let's just pretend that something's dropped and, and say whatever it's going to say naturally to you. Oh no, oh no. And just sort of push them a little bit with your foot. Okay. Oh, oh no. Oh no. Yes. Good. Good boy. Good boy. Good. I like this game. <laughs> Oop, oh no! Oh no! Good. Good boy. So, little look. Did you see it? Him looking at me? Yeah, he put his ears back just a little uh. bit. Okay, he dropped a piece of. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Just so we know where the food is. Ooh. Oop, so, oh no! Yep. Oh no! Good. Yes. Good boy. Did you see him? He curled his lips a little bit. <laughs> Good thing he's little. <clears throat> So let's have you, let's see if we can change his orientation so he's going to face the camera because he's facing us. Okay. And um, so we might just lure him around, see if I stand over here. Mm -hmm. Come on. Come yep. Or toss the treat back and see if he'll come back and then come forward again. Come here, baby. Come here, baby. Come here. I know. I know. I don't want to be lured. Okay, so now try it again. Um, the just counter? Saying, yeah, just like your, is it the counter's in front of you? <coughs> okay. There. Oop. Oh, no. Oh, no. Good. Oh, boy. That was a little bit better. There was no lip curl on his part. And it was very, like, it was just twitchy. Okay, I didn't see it. Oop. Oh, no. Get back. Get back. Good boy. Good. Good boy. Same thing? Mm-hmm. One more. Oop. Get back. Oh no, get back. His ears went back a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> so we're pushing the process a little bit. You know, I'd have you really do a day of just foot stuff, heavy reinforcement, leave it alone. The next day getting a little bit closer, the next day pushing him a little bit. So he's not quite so sure about you, but it's good for everybody to see that it's, it's a slow process and it takes time, but it does work. Okay, so let's have you drop the wooden spoon and um, you know, he knows what's happening. So drop it maybe in front of him again. Sure. <laughs> Good boy. You want me to pick it up and treat him? Yes, pick it up and treat him. Good. Good boy. Same thing? Mm-hmm. Oh. Good. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Okay. okay, and let's do um, the scissors. Good boy. They're all objects that he has been, he's not ever guarded as far as we know. <laughs> Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good. The only thing I'd like to see over time, and I'll have to pay attention myself when I work with him, is his tail is down. I'd kind of like to see his tail up so that he's, so that he's not so worried. It's, it seems like part of him is worried and part of him is, is okay, but he's not completely dancing around. He's sort of mm -hmm. frozen in motion. Um, let's go ahead and do the green pen, because I think it's a little bit less than the pencil. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good. And do you want me to do any pushing back or are we just dropping these? Just dropping for now okay. because he had a little bit of a... Good boy. Because those would be two separate things. He has, because he has a reaction to feet and hands coming towards him, that's one criteria that I worked with. The second criteria I worked with was anything that drops is followed by high value treats. So think of you drop something, $500 rains down on him. And then I'll combine those two things. But it's too early really to combine them with you because you've just started with him. Got it. Um, and each person that I generalize him to has to go through the same process until he understands, oh, 
anybody that's around me that drops something, I'll get paid for. So good. Let's do the pen one more time. Good boy. Good boy. Good. And so it's really important that um, what Amy does is that when she picks up the object, and if it, if it maintained any value, picking it up and paying them at the same time almost devalues the pen in that, oh, that's, wow, who cares about the pen because I'm getting $100 in hand at that point. Okay, let's, um, let's do the pencil. He's, he's what we call warmed up in that he's been playing the game and he understands what's happening. <laughs> Good boy. Good boy. He's like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Good boy. Good boy. Oops, one on the floor. Good. So break up a couple of um, pieces of treats. So maybe you have 10 in your hand. So he's going to get a big payoff, and I'm going to have you drop the paper towel to your right, the one that doesn't smell like grease. Okay. Again, kind of casually. I'm going to bet that he's not going to do anything because he's playing the game, but... And same process, just with the paper towel. Yep, and you're going to drop the load of treats. Okay. <laughs> Hi. And drop the load of Good treats. Good boy. Good. So it's also important, Amy made a good judgment call. She kind of moved the treats away from the paper towel. She didn't drop them right where the paper towel was, which was a great choice. So I'll have you do that one more time. And let's have you sort of switch your position, maybe come over here and okay. just hang or, um, again, we're sort of trying to fake, you know, we're trying to fake a natural situation. <laughs> Good boy. Good boy. Good. Very nice. Good. All right. So when Benny gets done eating that, let's bring out um, Duke. And um, Duke's had a little more history with Benny, so we'll see how he's doing with that. Today we've been generalizing Benny's classical conditioning to other people. He's great with me, but now he needs to learn to be great with other people. So now we've got Duke Champney here, and he's worked with Benny yesterday. So tell me what you were able to accomplish with him. Um, well, first of all, I, I was able to get him out of his crate. Okay, so he didn't guard his crate. Did not guard his crate. Right. Uh, seemed to be very happy to see me. Good. So he had, he clearly has what's called a CER conditioned emotional response to seeing you. Yay! Yoo -hoo. And, and I reinforced that by, by treating him Good. also. Um, so I had let him out mm -hmm. and, and asked him for a few sits and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I just started with the, the foot right. movement, treating him for that. Okay. And, and just kind of played on that until I kind of put, moved in with my foot, okay. treated him the same thing that we've done here. Yep. And, uh, uh, and of course, I, I wanted to push it a little bit, so I actually started using my hand, okay. put my hand down to him, okay. treating him until I could actually push him back. Right, right, good. Yeah. And now, did you see, was he looking excitedly? Was he uh, um, He was pretty attentive. He knew what the game was a couple of times, like he, we saw here, his ears did drop back. Okay. Okay. okay, and you still re you still gave him the high value. I still treats. gave him, yep. Yeah. Good, yeah. good. Okay, so Mr. Benny's just been taking a little bit of break. He's gonna <clears throat> he's gonna join rejoin us. Hi, Benny. What do you think? What do you think? So, Benny resource guards his crate, and he will do that still with new people that come in. Benny also resource guards laps. Come here, baby. So we're gonna get him up on my lap. Come here, good boy. Because now that I have a history with him, he sees me as something of value. How exciting is that? And I'd like you just to take some treats. I want you to walk out of the shot and then come back and just treat him for, um, for your presence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so he already, you can already see mm -hmm. that's a great, this completely response, different yeah. response than he's had other times when he's been sitting in my lap. Good. And walk out again. And this time sort of come past us and then sort of swing around this way and then feed him some treats. Okay. <clears throat> so good, he's clearly. Great. Okay, good, so have it in that seat. So this is something that the owners are gonna have to do 
and um, I'll be working with them. We're both going down to Brooklyn next um, Friday, and we'll be working with them on that as well because he tends to resource guard Heather when he when he's sitting on her lap. Um, okay, so we're sitting here at the counter because I want to replicate as much as possible. It's still a set up situation and that Benny understands there's a game happening here. Um, we're going to start to drop things and Duke's going to um, put his foot out, give him heavy treats and then pick the object back up. Okay. And um, let's not move them yet. Let's do a couple warm ups before we actually um, move them away from the thing. So now his tail is up, and that's interesting, and he's wagging because he has a relationship with you, whereas Amy's still new to him, so he played the game, but not as excitedly as he is now. <laughs> okay, so let's start, with, um, let's start with the pen, and then we'll go to the paper towel or something. Good. So give him more than one piece. Good. I'll see if he'll get interested in the pen again. It's right there. Good. So as you pick up the pen, be sure you treat him too for that. Good. Good boy. It's a good boy. So we're just going to wait a second and, and have nothing happen for a while. And when I um, work with him alone, I usually am making a meal or I make my breakfast or something and I have already set up objects and I already have the treats ready. So it's, it's trying to replicate more of a normal situation. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's drop the pencil. Okay. Uh-oh. Good. Good boy, Benny. So it's funny, now his tail's gone down, and he's, he's kind of looked at the pencil a couple of times, um, but he's not all jumpy and excited again. So let's just give him another minute and, and um, let him just sort of chill out, and even if, he, even if he goes back over the couch. He seems to be, you know, he's very in tune to things that are dropping, and ever since he's come to, to live with me, it seems like I drop all kinds of things now that I never dropped before, and, and we all stand around and say, where's the dog, before we decide whether it's safe enough to pick it up if I don't have treats ready and available to go. So it may, you know, it still may stress him out a little bit. Yeah, he looked a little bit stressed. Yeah, yeah he, he, his emotional response hasn't completely changed over yet. Right, and but with time and, and yes. you know, he, yes. it should be, uh, could be actually a fun game for him. Oh yeah, it is. I mean, it is yeah. a fun game right. for him with me, yeah. but it's moving everybody or as no, as many people as I can through all of those steps. So mm -hmm. really yesterday and today we did a little foot movement. Um, and did you drop anything yesterday? Or when, just when I was working with him? Right. Or you yeah. just, you did drop stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And moved him and he was. And moved him. Okay. Yeah. With my feet and hands. Okay. Good. Good. And what sort of things were you dropping yesterday? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't dropping anything. I was dropping treats for him just for the movement okay, of, so of, my, of right. my feet. And then to push him with my feet, I would drop him treats. Okay, okay. And, and like I said, the only thing, a couple of times as he has went back, so I started wondering about him. But, right. But uh, again, and then I put him in his crate. Yeah. And uh, he had his leash on. <laughs> and I was going to actually reach in to <laughs> unhook his leash. I right. remember, oh, wow, he saw his guard in his crate. So I actually got him back out, unhooked him, and then... Back back in. In, okay, yeah. good, good. So just some preventative work there. Right. Now, um, hi Benny, you're back. So I just want to talk to you because you have a different response than other people do when he starts to guard. And so when, I don't, I don't know that it's happened, but when it's happened when we were having a party here and Benny was here and, and he started to guard um, the towel or whatever it was. And so if you would share what, your, what, what happens to you when he starts to guard things. Why nothing at all, Benny. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. Um, I guess when he puts a value on something, right. it also uh, makes me put that value on it. Right. So I, I, I want it more. Right. And, really. and want to attempt to take it away from him. Right. And were you sort of surprised by having that response? Um, I mean, you're a trainer. We've been working together for a couple of years. Yeah, I guess I know better. Right. But the fact is that if he assigned value to it, then I also want it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, 
And do you feel like testing him? I do. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Yeah, there's an honest answer. Yeah. And, you know, it's, this is just my opinion. I haven't done any sort of formal surveys, but it seems like men have a harder time, particularly <clears throat> with little dogs. When little dogs start guarding, it, it does something internally to you that's different than me. Like when he starts to guard something, I completely devalue it and walk away. I could care less about the thing simply because he's assigned <laughs> value to it. And, and the exact opposite happens for you. When he assigns value, you may not even want the pen or the paper towel. Right. I mean, it's of no value to right. you. It's you not, don't even care. But he wants it. Right, but as soon as he wants it, you <laughs> want yeah. it worse. Yeah, and you, it's totally and you, true. And you want to, like, like, what do you really want to do? I want to snatch it from him. <laughs> <laughs> so good. And... And so it's fascinating to me because, like I just said, Duke and I worked together for years, several years together, and you know about classical conditioning, you know about the rules and changing the association, yet you sort of have this primitive guttural response that you really have to fight. And um, it's one thing that I'm going to be talking to Clive and Heather about when we return them. Come on. Because I suspect that Clive has that same response when when Benny gets something and it makes Clive want it even more, which is why he gets the oven mitts and reaches under the couch for the pen. Yeah. I mean, who cares? It's just a pen. Right. You know, there's a, there's a, there are a dime a dozen. Yeah. Or he gets the pencil or, or whatever, it, whatever it is. And that is going to, you know, I think, frankly, I can do all the work in the world with him. I can generalize him to 25 people. But if Clive or Heather are going to have a really big issue with him guarding stuff and it's going to make that prim primitive response happen, then, then he's going to go back to guarding it again. Now, now everybody wants it. Everybody's assigned value to it. Right. Changing okay. their behavior to change their dogs. Yeah. 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 I, I believe so because, because he's going to have that. He's going to have that emotional response to it, just like you have emotional response. And even though, and you sort of have to talk to yourself and say, "Wow, I really want that," but it's not in the best interest of the of the dog. Right. Okay. And that's exactly what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Okay. So we're going to drop um, some paper towel. Keep any kind of get off. Oh, that's fun. And um, so let's see. He may, he may take it and trot away. I don't, I don't know. He did yesterday with me. It'll be the first time with, with towel, and that seems to be such a value. Um, so let's not do any foot thing. Drop the towel or t sort of toss it away, and you're going to give him heavy treats, and then pick, pick up the towel again. And be sure you give him more than one piece. Don't be stingy with that. Yes. Good boy. Now don't reach for it. And I know you want to, right? No. Nope. <laughs> you're, you're lying. <laughs> Good. I'm going to have you come and walk around over here and bring some treats with you. <coughs> Because he is between you and the towel. And now drop some treats again. Good. Good. And let's do that again because he, he thought about it. He went and sniffed the towel and... Because he knows I want it. <laughs> right, you're... Like that little seven pound dog wants that. I want it even worse. Good boy. So it looked a little more anticipatory for, at you for the stuff. Kind of into the game. Mm hmm Good. And as you reach for the towel, be sure you Good treat board, him. Yeah. Like that okay. added stimulus. <laughs> <laughs> right. So the only thing I would change about what you just did is reach for the towel first and then treat okay. him. If you treat him and then reach. Kind of distracting him more than... Yes, it's more yeah. of a distraction, and if he were still what we call hot in the guarding mode, then you putting treats on the floor is a predictor that the towel's going to go away, and it's exactly the reverse. We want you okay. reaching for the towel to be the predictor of the p big payoff. Okay. Okay? Yeah. So sure. go ahead, drop that again. Good. And so I'd have you get up and move a little bit so you're not reaching over him to, get to pick up the towel. Good. Good, he's boy. wagging his tail a little bit. Good. So there is a lot of little things in dog training, just like that. Mm -hmm. That would be a common mistake. Oh, yeah. 
So yep. um, there's sort of very few rules to classical conditioning, but they have to be followed in order for it to work. And and reverse conditioning is very easy to do, where the treats are the predictor that something's going to happen, and it and which is why if he were if he were a really big dog, we'd have him tethered to the wall. You know, we'd be marking off how far away we were. Um, and you would do a reach down and then toss the treats and then reach further and then toss the treats. You probably wouldn't be able to just bend all the way down and, and pick it up. Um, not, not to start with. You have to break all of those motions into smaller components. Okay, let's drop the one that has some grease on it to see if it's any, any different. Well, let's just have you sort of sit, you know, just like you're sitting at the counter and, and then I'll, I'll move it. Let's just wait and see if he's going to go investigate. He's checking. <laughs> so do you want the towel bad yet? No, not yet. <laughs> not yet, because he doesn't want it. Okay, so now go over to the side and just drop some treats. Good boy. He can still have the towel. And comes it back down. Let's get some more treats ready and I think it's pretty clear to see that this is our we're fine tuning this <coughs> and um, but he's he's already much better because he didn't race over, grab the towel and it's and it has some bacon grease on it and, and race off to some other place to guard it. <laughs> Good boy. So go ahead, reach and pick it up, and then treat him. Good. Good so that's fantastic from the start. Yeah, it is. Yep, it is. And, you know, there's a common theme I'm always talking about. There's no quick fixes. The behaviors can be fixed and modified, and for it to really stick and have a long-term effect, it, it has to be slow and precise um, with clear criteria and breaking things down into their smaller components. And yesterday when I dropped a piece of towel, I was sitting at breakfast, and I pushed it off the table. Benny just thought I was eating breakfast. He trotted over, he picked it up, and he started growling as he ran away with it. And I just was, oh, happy, happy, used a completely happy tone, wrote, walked up to one of the handful of treats, threw them at him, and came back and sat down, which then he followed me back over, and I couldn't get him interested in anything that I dropped. He was just all about, where's my payoff, where's my payoff, yeah. where's my payoff. Yep. Awesome. Yep. So now, just to transfer it to the owners. Generalize first. Yeah. So you and Amy are part of that generalization process, um, getting other people in, and ideally taking him other places so that he learns no matter where he is, when things are dropped or he gets something or feet move towards him, that he'll have a big payoff. And eventually he shouldn't have to have the big payoff. He'll just be accepting of whatever's happening. But you know, that's gonna take that takes some time. And the the issue with a small dog is when you're opening doors or any doors or the baby gates around the house, I always find myself wanting to move him out of my way with my foot, which is probably what started could have started this whole issue with the feet, which is separate from the resource guarding, but com but combined, because it's such a natural tendency to put your foot out and move the move the little move the dog or mm -hmm. hold him back. So <clears throat> I've practiced that with uh, wearing a bait bag and moving dogs around the house. I'll say no, wait, 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 and I'll you know give Benny a big shove and then toss him a bunch of treats so that again he gets the game with me. It's a matter of getting it with everybody else. Okay. Good. So let's just do it one more time. <laughs> Doesn't want the bacon grease towel. <laughs> Good. So. That's pretty tempting for him. That's mm -hmm. very good. I was that I whole for sure greasy he's take spot. That bacon grease <laughs> I did too. Good. good. All right. That's excellent. 
So let's call this a day because this was great. I always want to end on a good note. We've pushed him quite a bit today. He's got to be, he's got to have a really full little tummy there because he's had lots of uh, ham and turkey so far this morning. And um, let's do some review. On today's episode of Doggy Dilemmas, we were working with Benny, the seven pound Yorkie Terrier and classically conditioning his emotional response to resource guarding, which means he had a horrific emotional response of growling, snarling, he lunged, he pulled at the assessor hand initially and would guard anything that was dropped almost to the death. And as we saw today, he's made a lot of really great progress. We basically cannot get him to resource guard even a paper towel that's been soaked in some bacon juice when we drop it on the floor. Again, I want to um, remind everybody that this is a setup situation. This is a training situation. This is the way I would do it if I were training him and working with other people at the same time. And what that means is the dog is warmed up. He understands the game. What has to happen next, in addition to the generalizing this behavior to other people, is he needs some what's called cold trials. He needs some trials where there's no warm up. He doesn't know that we're playing the game. A very natural situation, maybe when I'm cooking dinner in the evening or making breakfast in the morning, I'll purposely drop something on the floor and then I'll dr also drop the heavy payoff when I pick up that object. And the real key is going to be, does he dive into guard that in a cold situation or, or is his emotional response, response been changed, truly changed, that he's like, yeah, I don't care about that anymore because something better will happen. That's going to be one of the key things. The other key issue is going to be to speak with Heather and Clive and make sure, particularly Clive, that he's not having an emotional response similar to the one that Duke shared with us where as soon as the dog attaches value to the object he wants it even more which is really interesting because I don't have that feeling or that response at all if, if as soon as he picks up something I don't want it anymore and I can just walk away and completely devalue and de-escalate the situation but if Clive is feeling like Duke and really wants to have whatever Benny may choose to start to guard and again my hope is that he's not going to guard anything um, but I'm going to need to work with Clive next week and changing his emotional response. So thanks for tuning in, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Having a doggy dilemma? Denise can help. www.denisemazzola.com Denise Mazzola is a certified professional dog trainer with over 20 years of experience. She specializes in new puppy consultations, rowdy dogs, aggressive dogs, and private lessons.